you want to get into Vatsim? Do you want to fly on the network and not feel afraid? Do you want to just fly around VFR or IFR and just have some fun? Well, let me be the guide to show you what you should and shouldn't do on the network. This is your first flight on Vatsim. Let's get into it. Oscar 22 Seattle approach. Good afternoon, Vertic Contact. I maintain 15,000. Flutter Act Booz, I want to welcome the board. Two thousand six Seattle wind two zero zero five for only one at six left quit land. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Flying Bacon 1908 1908's YouTube channel. Today is our first YouTube video, and in today's YouTube video, we are going to be doing your first flight on Batson. Now, my personal recommendation for your first flight on Vatsim should always be something fairly easy. My normal go-to is probably more than likely going to be a um, pattern work or VFR from one airport to another. In today's video, we're going to be doing it just a simple pattern. I don't know if there's any ATC online, but we will see here in just a moment. And I'll kind of show you some ways on how to find out if there's ATC available and what to do when they are. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about X-Plane 11 as well as X-Pilot. Now, I've got X-Plane 11 here up on the screen, and I've got X-Pilot right here readily available. I just have it off screen just for easeability. You don't want it to get in the way. <clears throat> so in today's video, we are actually going to look to see if there's anybody online first. So we're going to use what I like to call a VATastic. Now, this is just one of the tools that you can use to look to see if there's ATC online. However, whatever you choose to use is totally up to you. Now, if we look at this particular screen, we can see that Cleveland Center is online. We also can see that a Lexington Tower is online. So we're probably going to go over to Lexington Tower. We're going to go do a pattern work over there. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get loaded in. Again, we are going to be using a Cessna 172. So I have a Cessna Skyhawk. We're going to go to KLEX, which is Lexington Bluegrass. And we're just going to pick a random parking spot. We'll go over to GA2. And we will go ahead and you can shoot. We'd like for you to use a real world weather. However, we're going to use clear for this particular video just because I don't know the weather off the top of my head. So we're gonna be using clear um, weather and we're gonna go ahead and start the flight. So one thing that you do wanna keep in mind is that ATC is there to help you and not hurt you. So realistically, if you mess up, it's not that big of a deal. For your first flight, again, we are gonna be using um, the Cessna 172 and we are going to just do a simple traffic pattern. So if we go to our X pilot, we can see the X-Plane connection is established and that there are seven servers found. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, that means that you're able to connect to the network. But before we even connect to the network, what we're going to do is we're going to pull up our settings here. We want to make sure that flash icon for new private message, we do want that in case you do end up stepping away for just a moment and you have a um, ATC message, a PDC or pre-departure clearance, anything like that, you'll be able to see it fairly easily. Everything else you can leave unchecked. Automatically check XPilot for the stable updates. You can leave that as stable, that just makes it a little bit easier. And the rest you can keep uh, off the screen. I have keep XPilot window visible for the, the purpose of this YouTube video. However, you can turn that off. I recommend having the aircraft volume knobs uh, control the volume. That way that when you're flying, you don't actually need to um, physically go into XPilot and turn down the volume or anything. It's super easy. Now again, this is my VATSIM ID. You will put your own in there. Please use your own. You'll put your VATSIM ID, password, your name, your home airport, and the server that's closest to you. So for this example, I'm in Florida. So I'm gonna use USA East. If you're in Washington, you would say West, UK, you'll use the UK, so on and so forth. But for this instance, I'm gonna be using USA East. Now I will also talk about the video or the audio and push to talk. So you want to set your microphone device to something that is readily accessible. I have my headset. I'm going to turn my volume down here. I have my headset, right? So I have an external microphone, as you can see. 
I have voice mod. So voice mod allows me to kind of change that fairly easily. So I just leave that alone. However, you do want to set your output device to something that you want to use. So for most people, uh, you'll probably see something along the lines of real tech audio, something along those lines. But if you do have a um, Corsair or something, you know, aftermarket that has a little dongle, you'll see that in the drop down as well. COM1 volume, COM2 volume again, have that 100% with the volume knobs, you'll be able to update that as well. And the mic volume, set it to where it's in the green. You can see mine's pretty good in the green and go from there. The push to talk is kind of one of those key things where you don't really know what you want to do. To be quite frankly honest, I have a aftermarket keyboard that I can use all F24s or all the F function keys. Um, some people only go up to F12. If you don't have any function keys that are readily available, because most of them are assigned in X Pilot, or, or sorry, not X Pilot, X Plane, or Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, left control is always a good one. Keep in mind, if you're typing at the same time, you don't want to use left control for a lot because it will activate your push to talk and then you look kind of silly on frequency. And with that being said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and connect to the network and we are going to start our flight. So you're going to put your call sign here. My favorite call sign is November 220 Echo Romeo. You don't have to use that one, but you can. And we are going to be a Cessna 172. You want to make sure that you do select the Cessna 172 and you click connect. Now you get a bunch of messages here. You can look at them if you like. I will make this bigger. Again, it just says welcome to VATSIM and it gives you their link and anything else like that. Again, keep in mind, this is all stuff after you complete your first test and everything and after you make your um, your account and all that other fun stuff. But once you get all that so stuff set up, you can go ahead and connect up. Now for me, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tune to the frequency. So if you take a look on here, sometimes it'll tell you, sometimes it won't, and sometimes there's multiple frequencies. For today, it's gonna be 119.1. So we're gonna tune that in our COM1 here. So 119.1. And depending on if there is any sort of ATC talking at the moment, you may hear it. However, we're gonna get a simple COM check just to make sure that everything is working properly. Lexington Tower, November 220 Echo Romeo, radio check. 220 Echo Romeo, Lexington Tower, radio 555 on me. 555, thank you. That's a simple way. Uh, we like for you to have your call sign and everything like that. As a controller myself, I'd like for you to say your call sign when you do call up for radio check, just so that I know who I'm talking to. Um, as you heard, he did identify himself, so I know that I'm talking to the right person. Now, as long as your aircraft is started, again, you can click the X plane button that says start with the aircraft started and everything will already be up and good to go. And so with that, all I have to do is call up for a VFR clearance. So here's what we're going to do. Lexicon Tower, good morning, November 220 Echo Romeo, like a VFR traffic patterns if possible. And we'll wait for his response. Door 220 Echo Romeo, Roger, what is your aircraft type? We are a Cessna 172 Slant Golf. The Slant Golf is actually your equipment suffix, and we'll talk um, about that in a later video. And as we wait here, he's going to be building our flight plan in his controller client, and he should be giving us instructions here momentarily. Number 22 Echo Romeo, maintain VFR below 2500 and squawk 3045. A TBFR below 2500 squawk 30450 Romeo. Number 220 Echo Romeo, read that correct. Uh, start your discretion, Lexington altimeter 30445. Uh, ASA information, Charlie is current, you can expect runway 27 for departure. We'll expect 27 30445 in the box, Sierra Romeo. So, that was a lot of information that was just passed. So basically what he said, we're actually going to turn that off for just a moment here. So what basically he had just said was, is we can expect runway 27 for departure. So I personally use Navigraph charts, and I will pull that up and show you guys. This is something that you can use. You can also just use the FAA chart. However, this is personally what I use. It does cost money. I think it's seven or eight dollars a month. Um, but again, I will show you. So this is what we use here. We can see that we are here at the West GA and we are expecting runway 27 for departure. 
Now, he also said tree 045. Now, what does that mean? Well, that is the barometric pressure of the airport. Basically, the short version of the long story is, is that tells us where the pressure of the actual airport will tell us our altitude when we're flying around. Is that really a big of a deal to set it and to not to set it? Yes, no, maybe so. For a simple pattern work, it's still good to get into the habit of setting it every time. But again, totally up to your decision. And start at my discretion. So since we're already started and everything, I'm going to go ahead and turn the ATC back on and we will go ahead and let him know that we are ready for taxi. Now taxiing is pretty simple in and of itself. If you know how to drive a car, you know how to taxi an airplane. Lexington Tower, November 220, Echo Romeo is at the West GA ramp ready for taxi, runway 27. November 220, Echo Romeo, runway 27, taxi by a Foxtrot 4, Foxtrot, Foxtrot 1. Foxtrot 4, Foxtrot, Foxtrot 1, zero Echo Romeo. So when he does give you instructions after you say you're ready for taxi, you do want to repeat them back verbatim. That tells the controller that you have acknowledged what they have said and that you are going to follow them to a T. For this example, we are going to be taking Foxtrot 4. The way you can tell that is if you look right there, the letter and the number that's in that designation in the black box is going to be what you're currently on. And the one that has the arrows that tells you what taxiway you are going, you are coming up on. So he told us Foxtrot 4, which we are currently on. We're going to be taking a right on the Foxtrot and go all the way down to Foxtrot 1. So we're going to be taking a right right here. Now the one thing about the Cessna 172 is that it's um, it uses the brakes to turn. So if you start your turn and it slows you down because you're going too slow, just keep in mind that you just need to get a little bit more speed for it to actually turn for you. Now you want to try and keep someone on the center line of the taxiway, but it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you're on the taxiway and you follow their instructions, you should be just fine. Normal taxi speed is normally somewhere in the range of about 15 to 20 knots across the ground. Again, that's across the ground. That's going to be ground speed, not indicated airspeed. So as we taxi along here, you notice that my um, speed indicator here on my dash, that's indicated altitude, or indicated airspeed, sorry. And that hasn't moved, and you can see that we're still moving. You don't want to go too fast. You don't want to go too slow. So I like to keep it fairly slow. In the case that uh, the controller needs to give me uh, instructions, I can slow down if need be. So as we approach runway 27, you can go ahead and do whatever you need to do for your aircraft. For me, I'm going to drop one notch of flaps and I'll turn some lights on. But as you can see, all my lights are on, so we won't need to do anything. The Cessna 172, from the get-go, when you start the engine's running, it turns on all of the lights and everything for you, so you are good to go. When you come up to the runway, you are going to want to hold short of these hold short lines, is what they're called. Number 22 Echo Zero Echo Romeo, wind calm, enter right close traffic port midfield and when when each time we're two seven clear for takeoff. Right close traffic and report midfield downwind, clear for takeoff, zero echo Romeo, thanks. So what does that all mean? And I will explain that as we're taxiing out here. So what he's saying is right close traffic. So when we depart, we're gonna be making right circuit. And you guys will kind of see what I mean here in just a minute. Um, he report midfield downwind, so when I make that right hand turn and I'm about halfway down the runway, I will report saying I am midfield, I'm midfield downwind, and I'll show you guys a, a little picture here uh, towards the end of the video, and kind of further explain it a little bit better when we're not uh, on the live network. And clear for takeoff, basically that means you can take off at your discretion. If he says no delay, you want to make sure that you get up and off the ground as fast as humanly possible. For this particular aircraft, my rotation speed is about 60 knots, so as I see 60 knots, I will pull up and we will get airborne. One thing you do want to keep in mind is have a trim button or buttons set for easeability. You can see that I can let go of this and it will slowly climb because of the trim that I have set. Again, you guys don't have to do this. You can hand fly it completely 100%, but it is nice to have. As you do fly this circuit, you want to keep in mind that you want to keep an eye out for other airplanes. If AX tells you to do any specific instructions, you want to make sure you read those back verbatim to ensure that the controller is understanding that you have acknowledged his instructions and that you know what you're doing. 
even if you don't know what you're doing, you can ask them to repeat their last instruction. Joe Amber, 9 Bravo Charlie, Lexington Tower. And they can repeat the instruction for you. November 220 Echo Romeo, midfield on the downwind. So I just told him I'm past midfield. Zero Echo Romeo, runway 27, clear for the option. Clear for the option, Zero Echo Romeo, and be advised, we're going to be full stop. Number 220 Echo Romeo, Roger in that case. Wind calm, runway 27, clear to land. Wind calm, runway 27, clear to land, Zero Echo Romeo. So he gave me the option, um, which there's four options that I'll explain here later in the video. However, we are going to be doing a full stop landing and we'll be going back to parking and talking a little bit further. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be start making my right hand turn. I'm going to be making a little bit of a steep turn just in relativity to runway 22 that we that runway 27 is. So you can see runway 22 is there. And as we continue that right hand turn, we will see runway 27. We're going to bring some flaps in. Well, this landing is not going to be the greatest. I'm not a very good pilot. I don't know how to land, to be quite honest. But as long as you get on the ground at a reasonable time frame, as you can see, I'm basically pitching down and I'm still losing speed. So we will go ahead and get on the ground here. All right, now that we're on the ground here, we can go ahead and continue our rollout. We are going to go down to Foxtrot 5 and we will exit left. You want to make sure that you keep this expeditious because if there's other traffic behind you, you want to make sure that you get off the runway as fast as humanly possible. Number 9 Bravo Charlie, wind calm. Flat runway heading, runway 22, clear for takeoff. As we Bravo, Charlie, exit left here on Foxtrot 5. You notice that I did kind of stop Number abruptly. Two, zero, Echo Romeo, welcome back to the ground. Uh, you want to go back to the West FPO or the East FPO? A uh, West FBO is fine for Zero Echo Romeo. Number zero, number two two zero Echo Romeo, Roger, taxi to West FBO via Foxtrot. West FBO via Foxtrot, Zero Echo Romeo. So basically he asked me where I wanted to park again in this particular airport, the West FBO, and I'll show you here in just a moment as soon as we park. He was just making sure that I was going back to the place that I wanted to, that I started at. So I told him that we were going to go to the West FBO, and he just said taxi via Foxtrot. Now, Foxtrot 4, Foxtrot 1, all those, you can omit those, or the controller can omit those because they have the same designation. So, he just said via Foxtrot, and that gets us in here. Now, we're basically just going to pull in and stop. It's really not that big of a deal. We'll shut down the airplane. We'll talk for just a moment. We're going to stop here. We're going to set our parking brake and shut our engines off. So, one thing you do got to keep in mind is midfield on the downwind is going to be a little bit easier to explain and what the option is and everything like that. So basically when you're doing a traffic pattern, you're going to be making kind of a box, right? So the box that you want to make sure that you're keeping along with is in the same box each and every time. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try and keep it the best you can. The option is one of four things, a full stop landing, a touch and go, a stop and go, and a low approach. Touch and go is in and of itself self-explanatory. You touch down on the ground, you continue to roll out, and then you climb back out again. A stop and go is the same thing as a touch and go, except when you touch on the ground, you stop on the runway for up to two minutes in time. Then you can go ahead and start your roll again and take back off. From there, you also have a full stop, which a full stop in and of itself, basically, you get on the ground and you exit the runway and you go back to parking and what have you. And then a low approach is you fly just above the runway, whether between zero to about 150 feet is normally where a low approach kind of stands. But the standard kind of low approach normally is about 50, 40, 30, somewhere in there. And you just fly directly over the runway and continue your pattern just as you normally would. So you did hear me say, I'm advising you, we're going to be full stop. He changed the um, instruction that he gave me. It was a zero Romeo current winds, runway, clear to land. It's going to be the same thing for 99% of controllers. And if they have any issues, you know, they will tell you over frequency. And one thing I do want to say before you start going to fly is the one caveat. If they tell you to extend a specific leg, so each one of the legs has their own name. So when you're flying directly out, you just took off, that's called your upwind. You're, if they say, hey, extend your upwind, you just take off, you just keep flying. You just keep flying straight ahead the same heading that you are going to fly. 
your first right hand turn, which would be perpendicular to the runway, is your crosswind. The next turn, which is parallel to the runway, probably somewhere over in here somewhere, is going to be your downwind. If they say, then I, you know, the, the one common one they use is extend your downwind. So if they tell you to extend your downwind, you're just going to keep flying past the runway, and you're just going to keep flying that straight heading parallel to the runway. Then you also have your base turn. Now, nine times out of ten, controllers won't tell you to extend your base. However, they could. And your final one, and your final turn, is actually going to be your final, and that's when you come in to do one of the four options if they clear for the option, touch and go, what have you. So that's basically your first flight. Now, in further videos, we will talk a little bit further on the schematics of flying, how to talk for an IFR clearance, do a first IFR flight, and everything like that. So please stay tuned to the YouTube channel. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time. See you.